Hello and welcome to another thrilling math video. This is going to be uh, section 5.1, day 3 for pre-calculus. And we're going to start here with a little algebra review. We're going to need an upcoming... Uh, uh, we're going to need an algebraic uh, skill here to solve example 9. And this you hopefully will remember from a previous, previous class, but I do bring up this meme just because I love it so much. Okay, here is what we're going to deal with later. Uh, you might remember this from last year in college algebra, but we have a log plus a log. It could be a natural log or an LOG log. The big thing here is we got a plus of two logs and we've got a difference of two logs. Logs are just other ways to write exponents. When we have a plus sign here, we can just condense this into the natural log of this times this, x times y. Because when we're multiplying like bases, we add exponents here. We're kind of adding exponents. That means we're going to multiply those together. And here, because this is a log log, I'm going to write log log. And because this is a minus, I always imagine that minus sign turns into a fraction bar. And the first thing becomes the numerator. And the last thing becomes the denominator. So that's the same as the log of x divided by y. Uh, we are going to need those in an upcoming example. Well, let's dive in. Example number seven. Now here, uh, the clue to get started on this, I think, is the directions. They give us this form, 1 over 1 plus sine x. Rewrite this so it's not in the form of a fraction. Now, uh, if you remember, if we have like a plus b under c, or if I reverse that, a plus b over c, this one, the denominator is two separate terms. We cannot break it up. This one, the numerator is two terms. We could break it up and make that as a over c plus b over c. And then it's possible each of these might reduce down and no longer be in the form of a fraction, so it would not be in fractional form. Uh, but in this case, our denominator is two terms, so we're not going to be able to break it up into fractions right away, like 1 over 1 plus 1 over sine. That would not be legal. So when we see those directions, what we're going to do is multiply by a conjugate. I'm just going to copy the original whoa, original problem here in blue ink. That's our original 1 over 1 plus sine x. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. 1 minus sine x. And the reason we're going to do this is when we FOIL this out, of course, because it's a sum and a difference, we use the conjugate, we will have no middle term. So first term times first term is 1. Positive sine times negative sine is negative sine squared. You might be able to see where we're going with that denominator shortly. Uh, the numerator is just this 1 times that quantity, our conjugate. So we'll just leave it as our conjugate. Okay, now here is where we're going to use a Pythagorean theorem. Uh, again, I've told you in the past, when you see a squared trig function, maybe with a 1 lurking around, doesn't matter if it's plus or minus, think Pythagorean. So I'm going to come over here and do a little shorthand. Sine squared plus co squared is equal to 1. I want 1 minus sine squared. So the 1 is going to stay over here. I'm going to bring over the sine squared. So now it's 1 minus sine squared. What's it equal to? On the other side is cos squared. So that denominator, 1 minus sine squared, let me come over here. I'll stick with the black ink. That is going to become a cos squared x over 1 minus sine x. Okay, now, since our denominator is one term and the numerator is two, now we can bust it up into two separate fractions. Just like when we add or subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. Here is the common denominator. So we're going to bust it up into one over its own co-squared denominator minus sine over its own co-squared denominator. Now let's see what we can do with each of these pieces. Each piece right now is in the form of a fraction, but I have a feeling we can do something about that. Okay, the easiest one is right here at the beginning, 1 over cos squared. Well, cos is the reciprocal of secant, so this 1 over cos squared is the same as secant squared of x. Now here, this one's a little different. Notice our denominator is a squared, our numerator is first power. So here we are going to break this up into a first fraction times a second fraction. The numerator sine to the first is going to be sine x. 
and then I guess we just multiply that by 1 so we wouldn't change it. We need a placeholder over here for our second fraction. Our denominator is co-squared, and since this is we're breaking this into two multiplied fractions, we can write this as cos x times cos x. Okay, we're pulling it apart. Now, let's see what we can do with each of those individual pieces. Secant squared is fine. It's going to stay like that minus sine over cos. That sure can be turned into a tan x. And then 1 over cos, that turns into a secant x. Okay, and I would be absolutely fine. I believe in this example in the textbook, they leave it exactly like this. Um, but if you want to, I guess we could pull out a secant x. Secant x. So this term here, secant squared, would get knocked down a power to secant x minus. This secant has been factored out fully, so we would have a tan x there. Again, if uh, you do not do that step in the homework or on the test, I would not even think about deducting half a point. All right, on to example eight. We got this little symbol here. That's a calc symbol. This says uh, it's sort of a lead-in to some calculus concepts. Now, these problems are a little strange the first time you see them. It says use the substitution. We are going to substitute this. X is equal to this, 2 tan theta. And they're telling us here that we're staying in the first quadrant. And that's just to make everything nice and easy. Everything's going to be positive because our angle theta is between 0 and a half pi. And it says we want to use the substitution to write this radical as a trig function of theta. Now when they say as a trig function of theta, we're going to take this and transform it into, we might have a number, like uh, we could use the letter A or just I'll put the number symbol there. Well, I guess that isn't the number that's a hashtag. I'm showing my age here. So we might have like a and then uh, a trig function like sine or cos or tan, depending. And then we're going to have some value here, probably just an x. So when it says write this radical as a trig function of theta, uh, we're going to have, you know, this is equal to some value like 3 cos of 2x or maybe 7 tan of x, something like that. That's what the directions are pushing us to do. So I'm going to have, stick with my red ink. Here is what they're starting us with, 4 plus x squared. And they are telling us that x is equal, I'm going to put it in a set of parentheses, x is equal to 2 times the tangent of angle theta. So we're going to make that substitution. Here's an x, and I'm going to put it in a set of blue parentheses. I'll sort of do this. 4 minus, and we used to have an x in there. That's a terrible exponent. Let me fix that. There we go, squared. So we used to have 4 minus x squared. I left an empty set of parentheses for the x, because what's going in there is this 2 tan of theta. 2 tan theta. Now, these problems are designed to be solved. They're uh, started with the answer and worked backwards. So these are going to work out very, very similar uh, no matter what the type of problem is, what they start with the radical or the initial substitution. So now here it's just going to be some algebra. So let's go under that radical, 4 minus, and we're going to square this. The number one mistake here, people might forget to square this 2. We are multiplying a 2 tan times another 2 tan. So we square the 2 and get a 4. Notice these numbers match. That should always happen. And then that tan theta has now been upgraded to a tan squared theta. All right, now we're under the radical, and since we have a minus sign, we cannot square root those terms separately. We can't just square root this 4 and square root this 4 and square root the tan squared. Uh, that would be breaking math law. But we can, under the radical, factor out a 4. So let's pull a 4 out, and now we have a 1 for the placeholder minus the tangent squared of theta. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We could, if we wanted to right now, we could square root the 4 and bring it out as a 2 since we're multiplied here. But let's just hold off for a second. And let's do something with that 1 minus tan squared underneath that radical. 1 minus tan squared. Oops, hold on, hold the phone. Uh, look, at it. this is a plus. So why do I have a minus in there? Let me back that up. Back, 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 back. 
This should have been a plus. What the heck was I doing? You're probably screaming at your, you know, computer. So that should be a plus. That should be a plus. And again, it's not going to change our other steps there. That's, we're still going to factor out that 4. So now it's a 1 plus tan squared theta. Let me get that in there before I erase it anyway. Okay, and I forgot a parenthesis. All right, now if we go to the Pythagoreans and we look for 1 plus tan squared theta, well, that's the same as secant squared. So this 1 plus tan squared, we can use a Pythagorean to make that into a secant squared times that 4. Now, since these are multiplied, we can square root them separately. The square root of that 4 is a 2. The square root of secant squared will just be secant to the first. So there we go. Remember where we started. We started with an algebraic expression. 4 plus x squared, there's no trig in there at all. And we rewrote that to now be in a trig form, 2 secant squared of theta. Oop, and what's this up here? I guess, you know, you could look at this uh, point of view of a triangle. Um, 2 tan theta is equal to x, that's where we started. If we solve that, divide by 2, you'd get tan is equal to x over 2. So tangents opposite over adjacent. So here's our angle theta. The opposite side is x. The adjacent side is 2. If we did Pythagorean theorem, we would get this for the hypotenuse, 4 plus x squared. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful math. And here's one for you to try, or two to try on your own. Uh, again, flip back to the first example. We did example seven. This is going to work out very, very similar. You are going to multiply by a conjugate. Um, and then the one down here, uh, just mirror that on example eight. So you know the routine. Pause the video and try them out. And then start it up and see if you got them right. Okay, first one. Co squared is our numerator. 1 minus sine theta is our denominator. We're going to multiply by the conjugate of 1 plus sine. Numerator also. Now, I would hope that you did not distribute that cos squared. Ooh, well, hold on. I see how this problem is going to develop now. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm just going to move down here. So our denominator, 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine. Well, that's going to be a 1 minus sine squared. Numerator, let's not distribute, cos squared times quantity 1 plus sine theta. All right, and we look on our formula sheet that is tattooed on our brain. 1 minus sine squared, well, that's going to turn into cos squared. Cos squared theta is our new denominator. And then up here, we have a cos squared theta. Ooh, look at that times 1 plus sine theta. So we have a cancellation. Cos squared and cos squared cancel out. So all we're left with is 1 plus sine theta. Beautiful. We went from this mess down to just pretty little 1 plus sine. And next, here we go. Again, these problems will always develop in a very routine way. Here is our original radical. So we've got radical 9 minus x squared, but I'm going to leave an empty set of parentheses for that x, because we're going to sub in x is 3 sine theta, 3 sine theta. So working under the radical, we squared a quantity, 3 squared is 9, sine squared is sine squared. Working under the radical, we're going to factor out that 9. Of course, we're going to stay under the radical. We're factoring out, but we're staying underneath. 9 quantity, 1 minus sine squared. Ooh, very similar to our example. So now we can uh, look at our Pythagorean formulas and replace the 1 minus sine squared with a cos squared. And now since we have, we're up here, we had two terms, we could not square root separately. But now since we are multiplying in here, the root of 9 is 3. The root of cos squared is cos theta. And again, they did tell us we are stuck in the first quadrant. Uh, we wouldn't have to worry about is this cos positive or negative. You know, they're kind of taking it easy on us and making sure everything stays in the first quadrant nice and positive. 
I think we got one more example. Let's see what... Oh, okay. Here is why uh, we needed to do that little warm-up. Okay. So we got here... Uh, rewrite the natural log of cosecant theta, absolute value, uh, plus the natural log of uh, tan theta, absolute value, as a single log, and then simplify that result. Uh, the bars are on there. Remember, we cannot log any negative numbers. Logs are not defined for negatives. So these bars are just forcing us to stay, play within the rules and not be logging negative values. But we got a log plus a log. So that will combine into the natural log of the product. Oops, cosecant theta times tan theta. So we wrote it as a single log, and now it says simplify. So let's start thinking, what can we do with those? Uh, I always do like to fall back to the strategy of turning everything to its sine or cos form. Cosecant theta, well, that's 1 over sine, times tan, that's sine over cos. Ooh, look at that. So we are going to have a cancellation on the diagonal. Let me move this up here and get that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So on the diagonal, those are going to cancel. So we are left with 1 over cos, natural log, 1 over cos theta. And what is 1 over cos? Uh, that's secant. And let's keep the absolute value bars on there to make sure it stays positive. Uh, natural log, absolute value of secant. And uh, what I accidentally drag up here, that's just a little algebra help. You can look uh, in section 3.3 of the textbook uh, on that if you want a little refresher or if you just love math as much as I do. Uh, our last huddle problem. So very similar to the last one, uh, try to simplify that down to a single log, simplified form. Pause the video. So we got the natural log of, again this is a plus, so we will multiply those together. And I'm going to right now turn that secant into a 1 over cos. Oop, that's supposed to be an x. 1 over cos x. And then we're going to leave sine alone, because it is a uh, so we're going to multiply that by sine x over 1. Okay, if we multiply straight across, ooh, well, look at that. We got sine upstairs. We got cos downstairs. Sine over cos. I hope it immediately jumped into your head. Tan x. Natural log of the tangent of x. Okay, up next is the assignment. Here is uh, page 353. Number 50, 54, 56, 62, 64. I'm going to look into maybe getting that on the web assign. We'll see what that looks like for these types of problems. Okay, and that is the end of section 5.1. I'll talk to you in class.